School bullying is a very real problem, and it affects our children more than you might think. Did some checking, and researchers from StopBullying.gov told me 28% of students in grades 6 through 12 experience bullying. 20% of U.S. students in grades 9 through 12 experience bullying. Approximately 30% of young people admit that they bully others. Attorney John Phillips joins us here on The Morning Show. And, and, you know, John, the reality is that kids often feel paralyzed, helpless. What recourse do they have? Because the reality is bullying is not illegal in Florida. It's not. Well, well the, the legislature enacted the, a law that prohibits bullying. So it is illegal, but it, the, the law only makes schools have administration and policies. So whether... Oh, whether a school does that, how, how it enforces it is, is the problem. We, we, there's inconsistency. Um, otherwise, you've got to look at criminal law, which is assault and battery. Uh, otherwise, you've got to look at the injunctions, which requires a repeat incident of violence. So a bully, a kid has to be beaten up twice to even try to get an injunction. It's really messy. And there is a caveat here. When it's harassment, it's illegal according to federal law. Correct. Uh, harassment... Um, and and any time you're doing an unwanted touching, if I just hauled back and hit you, mm -hmm. you you're going to press charges, we would hope. Um, and so th there, there is that. But there's, we get calls during the school year week after week after week of people who are uh, chronically depressed children who just, who just, you know, more than back in our day. You know, back in our day, it, it, it stayed in the classroom. If you had a problem with somebody, it stayed in the classroom. Now with social media, we're seeing it expand. To, to the entire school, to the entire school district. And it, it's a lot for these kids to bear already, you know, under the stress to try to get good grades. And, and that's what I was going to ask you next. What about cyberbullying and how it falls under the purview of the, the laws and regulations that are on the books? We just, you know, we need our legislators to get, to get caught up on this. There's just not, it, there's not the law there. A few years ago, the public may remember, we had a case where, where a girl got seriously beaten up right outside of school, proper, school grounds. And the judge stood up and banned the bully from the entire school district. Now, the, the, the appellate court looked at that and said, you can't do that. There's a right to an education. And so where one right stop, one right start. And, and you know, we challenged the legislature this time, and we're going to send out emails yet again to try to get stronger laws because just depending upon a second, um, a, a, a repeat violence injunction isn't enough. That means a kid's got to be beaten up twice to even get help from the courts. So, you know, the Duval County school system from, from that case does have 390-CALL, C-A-L-L, um, to help report. They do have counselors that are available. Um, you know, we, we hate lawyers have to be involved in education. It's, it's unfortunate. But what's it going to take to bring about more stringent laws? I mean, for a kid to have to be beat up twice, uh, it, it, it's absurd. It, it's completely absurd. And, and, and for, for years since the area Jewett case, we've been, we've been banging on this drum. And the, the appellate court did say... All right, legislature, it's your turn. We, we do have a problem. We have a gap. The only law we have that's, that's got any teeth in it at all in Florida is this repeat violence injunction law. And that requires you to be a two-time loser. Some kids won't survive that. Uh, and so with more guns in schools, more problems like we have, we've, we've got to have something done. And, and in many cases, an injunction is just a piece of paper that says, stay away. And whether or not the kids are going to eat that is a whole other story. Um, what recourse do parents have to help their children and protect them? Right. Uh, you know, s s conversation. You, you know, you, 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 we've got to have children talking about this. Look, every, every parent's not a bad, a, a bad parent. Every parent's not the best parent in the world. But, you know, I have a five-year-old. And if anything comes home, you know, he, he comes home and somebody's bitten him or hit him, of course I'm going to take it very personally. Mm -hmm. But you've, you've got to have a good relationship with the teachers and the administrators, um, even when they're not willing to do so. You've got to force that issue. There are reports on the Duval County Schools website um, that you can fill out if you've got a renegade kid. Um, you know, if, if you have to, call lawyers. There are lawyers that, that do try to assist. There's not a lot that can be done because the civil law, criminal law, and injunctive relief law haven't caught up. So what I'm hearing is you're saying that the parents and the teachers have to be proactive and work together as a team. If you know someone who might benefit from this information, because we talked about the fact that so many kids are bullied out there, you'll find this interview on newsforjacks.com. Also, please feel free to share it because we don't want any of our kids in harm's way. All right, let's talk about the weather. Lots to talk.